flow. For this worked example, uh, we've got a tower. Uh, it's kind of like a high tension tower. Uh, and it's going to um, be supporting two loads, 40 kilonewtons and 50 kilonewtons, all uh, both 15 uh, degrees off of vertical. Uh, and we're asked in this to find the forces acting on members AC down here, uh, BC, and BD. Uh, so we've got forces down here at the bottom we're looking at, uh, and <clears throat> because we've got targeted members, we're looking for specific members, we're going to use the method of joint, or sorry, the method of sections rather than the method of joints. Uh, so for the method of sections, normally we would go in and we'd solve for the reaction forces, but there's a special case here. Uh, that I'm going to point out. So, <clears throat> to cut through the members and get to what we want, we would want to kind of cut right across like so. Uh, and so, by doing this, we cut through AC, BC, and BD uh, all at once. We've got only three members, uh, so this is the good, uh, proper way to, to do this. Uh, and we'll notice that all the reaction forces um, like we would have a reaction force in the X and the Y uh, down here, and a reaction force in the Y right here, from the pin joint and the roller joint there. Uh, but if we're at looking only at the top, uh, then none of those reaction forces come into play. So we can kind of skip solving for the reaction forces if we analyze the top section. So we're going to skip reaction forces and jump straight to a free body diagram of the top. So to save some time, I've uh, drawn a diagram here of what the top looks like. Um, so <clears throat> here I've got my uh, free body diagram of the top. I need to start adding forces in. Uh, so I've got this 40 kilonewton force right here. I've got the 50 kilonewton force right here. And I'm going to have forces down here. So this is FAC, uh, the member going from A to C. Um, this is going to be F going in this direction here. We're going to have F <coughs> um, BC and going straight down we're going to have FBD. So I'm looking for all three of these. Um, and I know some of these angles as well, the angles and the dimensions are going to be important. Um, so this angle right here, this is 15 degrees, and this angle right here is also 15 degrees. And then this angle here, uh, I've got a triangle, and I know from my original diagram, uh, I had a box and I'm looking at the diagonal. Uh, it was 10 feet or 10 meters across and 6 meters this way. So to find this angle theta, I would do uh, 10 negative 1 of opposite over adjacent. So 6 over 10. And that gives me my angle theta uh, of approximately 30.96 degrees. And so I can add that in right here. That's my angle theta, which is this angle right here. All right, so <clears throat> to make this simpler on myself, uh, one of the first things we're going to do with this whole situation is I've got these forces right here, 40 and uh, uh, 50 kilonewtons, and I'm going to break them down into x and y components, and I'm going to use Varignon's theorem with the moments. So, if I break this down into components, I would erase my 40 kilonewton force, and the horizontal component is going to end up being equal to 40 times the sine of 50, or sine of 15, and the vertical component is 40 cosine of 15. And over here on this side, I'm going to have 50 times the sine of 15 and 50 times the cosine of 15. 
All right, so now I've broken this down. Everything but FBC uh, is in the x and the y direction here. So now I can start writing out my equilibrium equations. So if I've got sum of forces in the x direction, uh, I'm going to have 40 sine 15 plus 50 sine 15 Uh, plus the horizontal component of FBC. So this is going to be uh, FB, FBC times the uh, cosine of theta, my 30.96. And sum of forces in the X is equal to 0. All right, in the Y direction, I'm going to have negative cosine 40, or negative 40 cosine 15, negative 50 cosine 15, uh, so let's do that for now. So negative 40 cosine 15 minus 50 cosine 15 minus FAC minus the vertical component of FBC, so it's going to be uh, FBC times the sine of 30.96 uh, minus FBD. And all of that is going to be equal to zero. All right. <clears throat> Last one is going to be sum of moments. So here I need to choose my point. Uh, and I'm going to choose point C because two of my unknown forces act through that joint. They are acting through point C there. So sum of moments about point C. Uh, I'm going to have you know, two, these two forces. These two forces are exerting a moment. And FBD is going to exert a moment. So <clears throat> this distance here, uh, the horizontal distance here is 10 meters. Uh, so 40 cosine 15. Uh, so we have positive moment times 10 meters. So the magnitude of my force is 40 cosine 15 times 10. And it's a positive moment. Next, I'm going to do this 40 sine 15. Uh, and this vertical distance here, if I go back to my original diagram, uh, the vertical distance between C and this point here is going to be 12 meters, 6 and 6, minus, again, negative moment. 40 times sine 15 times 12. All right, so next one uh, is going to be this 50 cosine 15. It's a negative moment, as I put over there. Uh, so 50 cosine 15 and my distance is 10 meters this way and then another 10 meters. So I've got times 20. Alright, go down to the next line. Uh, I've got one more force here and then FBD. Uh, so 50 sine 15, uh, it's going to exert a negative moment uh, and that is going to be, uh, have a distance, again this same distance, 6 meters plus another 6 meters is 12 meters. part is FBD, uh, and that's going to have a uh, force, that's the magnitude of FBD. Uh, the distance is going to be this perpendicular distance here, so 10 meters, uh, and that is a negative moment. So minus FBD times 10. And so that's all the moments I have acting about point C, uh, and that's going to be equal to zero. All right, so now I can go ahead and solve for some of these. Um, in the y direction, I've got three unknowns. That's too many. Uh, in the x, I've got one unknown, so I can solve for FBC there. Uh, so FBC is going to be equal to um, negative 
40 times the sine of 15 minus 50 times the sine of 15 all over the cosine of my angle theta. So my angle theta was 30.96. That gives me a number for FBC of uh, negative 27.16 kilonewtons. And since it's a negative number, that indicates it's compression. So uh, remember, BC is being compressed. Next, I can go ahead and I've got this big long moment equation, uh, and I've got FPD uh, in that moment equation, but everything else is just a number. So we can solve that for FBD. And FBD is going to be equal to 40 cosine 15 times 10 minus 40 sine 15 times 10 minus 50 cosine 15, or sorry, this is supposed to be times 12. Minus 50 sine 15 times 12. And that whole mess is going to get divided by um, 10. So FBD ends up being equal to negative 85.91 kilonewtons. And negative number, again, that is going to mean compression. All right, last one. So, now that I've found FBD and FBC, I can go back to my Y equation uh, and find the value for FAC. And so FAC is going to end up being equal to negative 40 cosine 15 minus 50 cosine 15. Uh, minus sine of 30.96 30 times my value for FBC, which is negative 27.16, minus negative uh, what I got here, negative 85.91. And that whole thing gives me a value of uh, 12.95 kilonewtons. And since that's a positive number, I know that that's going to be in tension. Uh, so here I've got my answer. FBC is negative 27.16. That's compression. Uh, FBD is negative 85.91 kilonewtons, that's compression, and FAC is 12.95 kilonewtons in tension. So with that, we've solved our problem. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.